Welcome to Christ Life Ministries. I have a present true prophetic message for us this afternoon. It is entitled, Hastening the Coming Glory. I shared with us last Tuesday and Wednesday that we are in the season of the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is gone. Uh, it ended sometime last week. But we are still in that season and we are expecting an outpouring or release of the spirit without measure on an individual basis. The collective one cannot take place again until next Feast of Tabernacles. And we see this typified in the book of First Kings. If you will turn there, First Kings chapter 6, talking about the Temple of Solomon, of which the church is a type. It, it's very instructive that even the Pentecostal fulfillment was taken out of that in First Chronicles chapter 5. But I'm not going there immediately. Look at First Kings chapter 6. And uh, we're going to look at two verses, the first verse and the last one. It says, And it came to pass in the 480th year, after the children of Israel will come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziph, which is the second month he began to build the house of the Lord. And if you go to verse 35, very, very instructive. It says, and in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, which is the month we're in right now. We'll come back to that was the house finished throughout all its parts. So according to all the fashion of it, so he was seven years in building. Really, it was not actually seven years, seven and a half years. The scripture just says because it wasn't up to eight years. Which, although this is not part of what I'm about to preach, but let me just uh, go there and come back in, in, a, in, a, in a minute. You know, do you know how precise the scriptures are? David reigned in Hebron for se exactly seven and a half years. And further down the road, you know, Solomon built the temple in exactly seven and a half years. I've discovered that this Bible is not just full of a lot of um, superfluous things. In other words, a lot of unnecessary detail. If it's there, it's there for a reason. We may not understand the reason, initially you know but as we grow spiritually and as we walk with god we will come to understand it when the glory of god did not manifest this feast of tabernacles i went to seek god and i asked him i said what's going on here you know we're expect we're all in I, I certainly was in great expectation and the lord said these words to me he said that it is the glory of god to conceal a matter but it is the honor of kings to search it out. Then he told me, search the scriptures. And so I did. And he brought me to this scripture. He said, do you, do you see that in the temple of Solomon, of which the collective church, as well as the individual church is a type, you know, that it wasn't finished until the eighth month. And the temple was empty for 11 months. They did not dedicate the temple until the next Feast of Tabernacles, which we see in uh, uh, Second Chronicles. Let's go there now. Second Chronicles, and uh, we're going to look at chapter 5, and we're going to look at, we're actually zeroing in on verse 12, but before I get there, I want to, uh, let's go to, uh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, look at verse 3. I'm just going to pick that verse and then I'm going to jump to verse 12. It says, wherefore, I didn't hear you folks. All the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, which is the seventh month. So it couldn't have been the seventh month where they finished it because it wasn't finished. It was in the eighth month. So it was a year later. And he said, you're in such a time frame now. And he gave me some understandings. And uh, in that seventh month, 
and that during the Feast of Tabernacles, the scriptures tell us in verse 12, I'm going to read verses 12, 13, and 14. Uh, it says, uh, read along with me, and it says, And the Levites, and the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, and of Jeduthun, with their sons and brethren, being arrayed in white linen, that speaks of cleansing perfection, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. That's where we get the hundred and twenty of the day of Pentecost. Because they began to speak in tongues, and the Bible says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. It's amazing, and it's humbling to know how great God is. On the day of Pentecost, they didn't know what they were doing. They knew what they were doing, but what I mean is, they did not make it to be 120. In fact, the scripture says it's about 120. That's thing about types and shadows, you can't, you must not be dogmatic. You know, it might be 121, it might be 119, maybe 123, but it was about 120. You know, and God so arranged it that they would fulfill partially this part of the scripture. Now, this feast here described in the Temple of Solomon was the tabernacles. It wasn't, it wasn't Pentecost. But to begin, and God gave me this understanding some years ago, about 2004, 2003, around the time uh, 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 Papa Kelly Vanna, that Papa Ralph brought Kelly Vanna, he brought me this understanding. I've never heard anybody say it before. Not even Kelly Vanna, not even Papa Ralph. It came to me by revelation, and it's true. You know what it is? trumpets sorry tongues is the trumpets of tabernacles there is no way you as an individual and we as a collective church can experience the fulfillment of the feast of tabernacles without pentecost because it is the trumpet it is the speaking in tongues which is the trumpet of uh uh uh, 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 uh pentecost that now becomes the trumpet of tabernacles because that is the primary vehicle through which revelation of perfection will come you cannot get it any other way it has to be through speak i'm talking about you have the head knowledge of it but the revelation knowledge of it has to come through speaking in tongues so it becomes the trumpet then from there you move to day of atonement which speaks of the um uh, cleansing perfection you now use the revelation that has come what we call now you know god's given it to us the seven uh, pillars of wisdom using you know the blood the word and the spirit to experience the cleansing out having cl these promises let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god second uh, uh peter all these are new testament scriptures but they are the they are the uh, uh reality of the old testament uh, shadows. Uh, we've said it this way. I think Papa Ralph was one who first said it. You know, it's beautiful. You know, the Old Testament is the glove. The New Testament is the hand. The hand is the substance. The glove is the shadow. So when you put your hand inside the glove and it fits it, then you say that the scripture has been fulfilled. Like your hand fills the glove. I haven't heard a better illustration of under you know understanding old testament and new testament types and shadows so you find that you know right back then it was 120 priests so on the day of pentecost god told over 500 people and he did it deliberately you have to understand god you know like i was sharing during the bible study about rishi sunak and and leaders and i talked about Naaman, i talked about ruth you know god looks at the heart he doesn't look at a religious tag. Nehemiah was a, was, a, was, a, was, a, was a Syrian. He worshipped a strange God. But he had a good heart. And he was unconsciously, with the honesty of his heart, he was seeking the God of Israel. But he didn't know. He didn't know. Then God planted a girl in his house from Israel. And said, oh, that my God, my, my Lord would go to the prophet in Samaria. And he would heal him of his leprosy. 
And they acted on that word, and we know the story. He, he eventually got healed. And he now took permission from, from Elisha the prophet and said, Look, I'm going back because I'm still in my official capacity. And I'm going to be a witness to them. This will be, you know, paraphrase. You know? So, but, you know, I can't worship that God anymore. Because I now know the true God is the God of Israel. So, but I'm going to take some land from here. I'll take some earth from here. When my uh, boss, when my uh, king goes into the temple to go and worship, I have to go with him for protocol. He said, but I will not bow and I will not worship. I will just be there. And Elijah said, it's fine. You know, we need to be flexible. We, do you know that on the earth today we have a lot of silent disciples? Oh, yeah. In Saudi Arabia, in England, in India, in China, there's some, not, you know, maybe a large number, but there's some silent who have heard the gospel, who've accepted Christ, but because of their situation, their political situation, their religious situation, they can't come out yet. They're coming publicly. And they go to all the ceremonies, you know, just stand there, but they're not worshiping. We know it from, we know that from uh, uh, the experience of Naaman. And so, you know, the scriptures, God knows the hearts of men. So you know what? To, so that they will not say he didn't give them a chance. He appears to over 500. Over a 40 year, over a 40 day period after his resurrection, he, he appeared to them on Easter, Easter Sunday evening. Then he appeared a week later when Thomas, you know, Thomas the doubter, <laughs> when he came back, you know. Then he appeared one time like this when they were, you know, fishing in the middle of the night. You know, they fished all night, early in the morning. You know, Peter said, I go out fishing. You know, because they were in a lurch. They, they had seen the resurrected Christ, but they really didn't know what was going to happen and all that. So f from that time on, he, start, he would appear to them over 40 days and teach them things concerning the kingdom. Knowing, Jesus knowing, but he didn't tell them that the feast of Pentecost was coming. So he taught them, taught them, taught them, taught them, taught them. Then he gave them an instruction. He said, look now, go to Jerusalem and stay in the upper room until you are endued with power from on high. All 500. But you see, this is, and the same thing is happening now. He, because he didn't tell them all the full detail. It is only those who have honest hearts that will obey the instruction without knowing the full details of what was going to actually happen on that day. So you know what happened? You know, Jesus, Jesus ascended after 40 days. Pentecost was 50 days later, only 10 days. See, human impatience, only 10 days. So I'm sure a few guys came First day, just like many of us. Second day, third day, nothing happened. Uh, I married a wife. I bought a new piece of land. I have five yoke of oxen. Legitimate excuses. Um, if I don't go today, it won't matter. After all, I've seen Jesus and he's told us this. And I said, maybe, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. But those who stayed faithful, those who obeyed the command. They didn't know it was going to be the day of Pentecost. They didn't have that understanding until after. So on the day of Pentecost, the people that remained, that hand fitted this glove of 120 priests. Give the Lord a clap offering somebody. Wow! God, I just got a, I just got a tweet from heaven. God pruned down the number from 500 to 120 that would fit the prophetic pattern. Just like he pruned down the number of Gideon's army from 30,000 to 300 that would fit the prophetic pattern of Noah's ark. 
<laughs> you know, you know, Noah's ark is three hundred cubits. It is a type of Gideon's army that God is. is, is as I'm talking now, he, it's already finished. It's ready. Like mommy said some weeks ago, the droplets are coming, but the deluge is coming. And those three hundred in the spirit, they're not all. They're not all in scripture pasture. They're not all in one place. Because the spiritual organization, you see, there's some here. We have a large number here, actually. You know, then there's some scattered in other places. There's some in England, there's some in Canada, there's some in the US, you know, but they have the same heart. They are all seeking the glory of God. They are all praying for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. They are all perfecting the love of God. They're all, you know, love is the is the big thing, like I preached during the Bible study. In their lives they want to they want to 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 to, to, to walk in love so every day they're saying i, I endure longer than patient like i the fruit of the spirit that's the main that's their characteristic they want to perfect the love of god and they're using the blood the word and the spirit they may not even understand the way we understand it here but that you see it's not the head knowledge that matters it is what you are doing it was what david ingles sang in one of his beautiful songs i'm taking it back and he said, the f just shall live by faith and revelation. And then he went on to say, the truth we know and act on is what sets us free. The, knowing the truth mentally will not set you free. Knowing that the Bible says by the of Jesus, your heal will not heal you. You have to have a revelation knowledge of that truth. And then act on it. And then it now release the power that will actually heal you. A lot of Christians know, have a head knowledge of the Bible, but they do not have revelation knowledge, which is head knowledge that is now enlightened by the power of the Holy Spirit from inside into the mind. Then it now becomes revelation knowledge. I find it very, very instructive, you know, along these lines, where, where, where John, you know, in, 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 in quite a number of places in the, in the book of John, you know, in particular at the resurrection on on a resurrection day mary magdalene was the first person to go to the grave it was early in the morning she saw the tomb was open the place was empty she didn't see anything she was greatly disturbed she thought the roman soldiers and you know the pharisees had come to take the boy his body away so she runs back to peter and john and said i've just come from the tomb went there to go and you know put the spice on his body he's not there so james sorry peter and john follow her they run john is a little bit more better in physical condition than uh, peter because peter is a little bit older actually peter was married john at that time was not yet married you know uh, he probably got married later i don't know scripture doesn't record that but it doesn't matter you know so john gets to the he gets it to the um tomb before Peter, he looks inside. He doesn't enter. No, no, he, he waits outside because he's a little bit, you know, John is very careful, he's very reverential. So, he, you, know, he's a, you know, I don't go where he just dared, dared to tread. So, now Peter comes. So when Peter enters, Peter is a little bit more rambocious, and, you know, he just goes in. So John follows him. And then they, they see where the body of Jesus had been laid. Because they saw it the day before, you know, on uh, Friday. You know? And it's not there. Then they see the cloth that they used to, to, to wrap his body. And the one that used to wrap his head, neatly folded in the place together. Ah! John. The Bible says, and John saw and he believed. Then he records this. He said, for they knew not as yet. So they knew those, they knew all those scriptures. Who, but they knew not as yet that he must rise from the dead. It was at that time that revelation came to John, even though he had the letter in his head. Very important. You can have the letter of the scripture in your head and not have a revelation of it from your heart. So it's the truth you know by revelation from your heart and then you 
act on that revelation that releases power that gets that sets you free. So it's not just knowing the truth that will set you free. I didn't hear an amen. So 120. So they uh, 380 of them about found other things. And God knew. God knew they were going to do that. But if he didn't tell them, it was, oh, you didn't give us a chance. So I gave them a chance. And honesty of heart weeded out. <laughs> weeded out those who will fulfill destiny and those who will not. The same thing is still happening today. And uh, so the day of Pentecost comes and the Holy Ghost comes. And you know, the 120 speaking tongues. And they, fu they, they fulfill. They are the hand that fulfills this glove. Of 120. But this is not talking about tabernacles. It's not talking about Pentecost. So Pentecost was just a forerunner. So this is still going to be fulfilled. The fullness of this has not yet been fulfilled. And so the scripture says. And it, came, and it even came to pass. Verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 5. And it, even, it, and it came even to pass. As the trumpeters. And the singers were as one. Everybody scream as one. Oh, we're going to have to get this unity thing. We have to get it. The harmony. To bring down the collective glory. I'm going to get to individual glory in a minute. I explained this on Tuesday and Wednesday. You know, because individual glory can happen at any time. It doesn't have to happen on the Feast of Tabernacles. We see the mystery of Jesus. You know, but for the collective glory to be on the day of, during the Feast of Tabernacles, we're going to have a group of Christians. There may not be many. In fact, there will not be many. There will be this number, you know, this order. It may not be exactly 120. You know, who is it as one? It's described in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Same mind, they speak the same thing, they have the same mind, and they have the same judgment. God's still working on us. Don't you never say, God's still working on you. God's still working on me. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with trumpets and cymbals, and the instrument, I didn't hear you folks. And the instruments of music and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That then, that then, not before then, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the blood had filled the house this still has to be fulfilled so we're looking at next year now for the collective fulfillment of the feast of time because even if we're ready now we have to wait because it has to be just like it was back then it was it said when the day of Pentecost was fully come. See, God does things with precision. He just died exactly on Passover. He could not die the day before. He could not die the day after. That was why he was very careful in his lifetime. Even though he was son of God and had angels and you know divine protection, he was very circumspect. Particularly that last week, you know, when he got when they got Jerusalem after what we call Palm Sunday. He would leave Jerusalem. He'd never slept in Jerusalem. Because they could rush them. These crazy guys. Still have them around today. You know? They could just get a band of men and, and, and fight and, you know, injure Peter, James, and John and try and get Jesus to kill him. Because they wanted to kill him. But nobody knew where he was staying. He kept it a secret. So they would think maybe he's in Jerusalem. They, they would see him in the temple. Then in the evening he just disappear. He would go to Bethany. Then he'll come back. He'll go to Bethany. You know, he said this during his ministry. He said, a prophet cannot perish outside Jerusalem. He was very aware of his prophetic destiny. 
he, not only would he must he die in Jerusalem, he must die on the day of Passover. And we need to understand these things, we ourselves. I understand this now. You know, this, this manifestation of the glory of God, the collective glory now, you know, has to be during the Feast of Tabernacles. So, even though I believe that we're just about ready now, we still have to hone in on the oneness, the perfecting of the unity, and all of that. So, God will have a, a core, like we have in atomic nuclear physics, you know, a critical mass, a core that is fulfilling all those conditions. And through that collective core, there will be the manifestation of the glory of God. I said this on Tuesday and Wednesday, and I want to repeat it now. Do you notice that in the day of Pentecost, there was no cloud? And they could stand. What we had on the day of Pentecost was fire that came on their, yeah, their heads and speaking in tongues. But no cloud, no glory, because it's not for that, it wasn't for that time. There have been experiences of people having the cloud and the glory, you know, down through the Pentecostal age, but it's been in little bits and snippets like we know Kenneth Hagen had and that experience, you know individually in his room when he died he died went to hell god brought him back then he died again and went to heaven and the high, his room was full of a cloud his grandmother and his mother tried to enter the room they couldn't enter so we've had we've had of that but we're going to we, we this is still going to happen where we're going to the glory cloud will invade the church and the choir will not be able to stand to minister in fact, you won't see any of them. If you're sitting here, you won't see them. Hear me on the pulpit, you won't see me. You'll be hearing my voice. This section here, the cloud. This section here, my cloud. The, at the door, there, there'll be a cloud. If people who are outside, you will put the door wide open. They won't be able to enter. And people who are inside will not be able to go out. These things are ahead of us. Are you listening to me? But this is the what I call the collective glory. I want you to observe something just before I go on now to tabernacles. Even about Pentecost because we learn from what has happened. So we can know what to expect. Do you notice that after the day of Pentecost, there was no more fire? The next one we read up, you know, we read in Acts chapter 8. Where they go to Samaria. They get them filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues, but no fire. They go to the house of Cornelius. They speak in tongues, but no fire. Ephesus, Acts 19, they speak in tongues, but it's a, what was consistent was tongues, but the fire stopped. What is the fire? The fire was just an outward manifestation. God is not going to do it every day. But the one that was critical, which is the tongues, was consistent and up till today. Are you listening to me? Very important. You know, because when God does manifestations, the carnal man always tries to reproduce the manifestation. For example, I believe, I don't know, I believe, because it's still ahead of us, that this cloud is going to come. But I don't believe it's going to be every Sunday we're going to have a cloud. It's not like God. God's not spooky. Amen. Might have a cloud on the day of, you know, Feast of Tabernacles itself, you know, or during that time, you know. And then once that has happened once, it may never happen again until the rapture. Or God may just do it occasionally in different places. You know, but you can't, you can't come and want the cloud every, every Sunday. That's how a lot of people go into error. Because God did something once. They now want God to do it. No, no, no. He, he does it as a fulfillment of scripture. If Once the scripture is fulfilled, he's not under obligation to do it again. He might do it occasionally here and then. I think he will. You know, I think, you know, maybe he does it in Nigeria. He might do another one in, in the UK. He might do some, one in America somewhere, in some church, you know. And, you know, maybe some in Russia or somewhere. I, I know God is like that. He will just, you know, just, but it will, it will be sporadic, occasional, and then it will stop. The reason is that men will start worshipping the cloud. God knows us better than we know ourselves. 
Hello, somebody. So that is that is the collective manifestation of the glory of God is, uh, is, is in front of us for tabernacles of next year. However, the individual manifestation of the glory of God is still, that is why I've titled this message, Hastening the Coming of the Glory. And this is typified again, thank God for the scripture, in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus begins his miracles, as the choir sang so beautifully earlier on, in Cana of Galilee. That day was not a feast day. It's not recorded. It certainly wasn't. Because they wouldn't do a marriage on a religious festival. You know? It was just an ordinary, you know, an ordinary day, you know, where they decided to have the marriage. That morning, Jesus didn't even know he was going to do the miracle. When they got there, Jesus didn't know. Jesus just, he just went out of curtsy with his, the six disciples. That is Andrew, John, Peter, James, Philip, and Bartholomew. The first six. You know, even the 12 wasn't complete at that time. You know, so he, he just went out of curtsy. And, and these guys were staying with him and they followed him. You know, and they also went to have a nice, you know, uh, uh, married feast. It was at the feast that his mommy comes to him with a strange request and said, they have run out of wine. They had wine, but the wine had finished. And Jesus asks the natural question, mommy, what's, 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 what's our business? <laughs> I mean, it's not our wedding. <laughs> they should have made arrangements for the wine. You know, you know, he said they have no wine. So, you know, what's that to me? What's that to you? If you read the original Hebrew, uh, Greek, it says, you know, what's that to me and what's that to you? And um, his mommy now says to the servants, whatever he tells you, do it. I've thought on that thing for years. I heard Kenneth Copeland to talk about this. And, you know, after meditating on it, I come to this understanding. I don't believe Mary knew miracles were going to start. She didn't have that level of because you know that later on in his ministry, you know, even when he was doing miracles, Mary didn't go. She would stay outside with her, with the other boys, James and all the other, chil all the other children, you know. He said, God, call him for me. <laughs> you know, people said his head is turning, you know. So, I mean, it took her time to, even though Gabriel appeared to her and all of that, that's another thing I want to share with you. You know, I want to, it's a, it's a repetition, you know, of the difference in head knowledge and revelation knowledge. She gave birth to the Christ. You know, but there were so many things she didn't understand. When he was 12 and he went to the, he said, why have you dealt like this with me and your father? He was surprised. He said, you know, did you not understand that I might be about my father's business? The Bible says, you know, she kept these things in her heart and she pondered them. She didn't really, she didn't fully understand. She understood better later on. But, you know, during the course of those first those 33 years, you know, she, her understanding was increasing, you know, gradually. So when the ministry started and the miracle started, she really didn't understand. That's why, in a, in a sense, she initially didn't agree with him. That's why she didn't go to his meetings. And that's why Jesus gave the uh, 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 oblique rebuke. It wasn't a direct rebuke. Rebuke not your rebuke not an elder he just said it he, he they said your mommy and your brothers and your sister they're asking for you he said who is my mommy who is my brother who is this that I hear the word of god in other words mommy should be sitting here and she did later we know that day of pentecost holy mother and all his brothers and that's why he he, he gave his mother to the care of john you know and John made sure that they never missed any day of that upper room. So when the Holy Ghost came, they were, that prayer I pray for you every Tuesday, they were counted worthy to be partakers of the first fruits. It was because, well, if, 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 if Jesus had left them to their natural thinking, they wouldn't have been there. They wouldn't have been there. It was because he insisted that she stayed with John. 
Then John made sure, and anywhere Holy Mother goes, all the children come. That's why all the brothers and sisters were there. And that's how we now got two apostles out of his siblings. Give the Lord a super clap offering. Two solid apostles, James and Jude. Hallelujah! No, 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 was that's because they didn't believe in him. I said all oh, that to say this. Mary didn't know. She didn't have that understanding at that time that miracles going to. But she had an experience, and the experience was this: that over the years, Jesus is thirty years old now. Over the years, when he was fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, you know, he was a he was a carpenter. They dealt with wood, and there was also masons, a stone cutter. They used to, you know, cut stones for building of buildings. So it was a good lucrative trade. That was what um, um, Joseph, his trade was. But she, she had observed something. That any time, maybe there's no wood, or there's no nails, or they are lacking something, Jesus will say, go to Uncle Jeremiah. I'm just, you know, paraphrasing. Go to Uncle Jeremiah in village XYZ. He has... And any time they went, they always found it like that. So she remembered. So she now came to them and said, look, they don't have wine. You know, you know, you have this ability of knowing where things are. You know, so you, servants, anything he tells you. If he tells you to go to X, Y, Z down the road or go to such and such a place, you will find wine there. That was her thinking. But the Holy Ghost was operating at a higher level. Give the Lord a clap of it. So when she, when she said that to the servants and said it to him, Jesus now goes back and consults with God. He said, I do nothing except what my father tells me. So God now tells him, you are to start your miracles today. 